Hey, Dan Illich here. Thank you so much to everyone in Melbourne who came out to our millionth download show. It was so good. It's, it's been a couple of days since I've gotten back into my country home uh, and I'm just shaking off the cobwebs from uh, a, a, quite a dusty night out with uh, Richard Feidler. Well, we drank and had some long conversations. It was like a six-hour episode of conversations with Richard Feidler uh, at the bar after the show. So, you know, that's oh, we spoke about all sorts of things, Nordic gods mostly. Um, it's um, a real thrill to give you that show right now especially if you're on the Patreon. If you're on the Patreon, you're going to hear the full thing. If you are on the free feed, uh, you're only going to hear the first 15 minutes. Uh, For the full hour and 10 minutes, you're going to have to subscribe to the Patreon to listen to it. I think that's the only, that's the fair thing to do. We spent a lot of time and effort putting that show together. It's a really, really good show. Thank you, Melbourne, for coming out. It really uh, warmed the cockles of my heart to see uh, probably about 180, 200 people in the audience uh, to come see the show. It was a lovely night. The Malt House were such a wonderful group of people to work with and the venue itself is beautiful, beautiful. the beautiful sunset glistening off those rusty walls with skyscrapers in the background uh, telling rude jokes uh, about the world. That was a real treat. Thank you so much for coming along. Thank you so much for supporting the show all these years. And, um, yeah, sign up to the Patreon to hear the full thing. It's a great show. You'll have a good time. E- even Lewis. We managed to get Lewis on. Now, a word on Lewis. Uh, he's, we had some technical difficulties. We could hear him. But he couldn't hear us for some reason. I don't know why that was. We tested it and it was fine. But then when he came on, he couldn't hear us. Anyway, so it's, it's quite a comedy of errors there, but um, uh, very, very funny stuff. Anyway, catch you later. This is a rational fear. We're recording this episode of Irrational Fear on the lands of the Kulin Nation. Sovereignty was never ceded. Let's start the show. <laughs> The following program contains rude words like Mark Latham, blockchain, and Twitter. A rational fear recommends listening by immature audiences. Comedians, experts, laughing at the world as it burns down around us. <laughs> this is Are you ready? a rational fear. Tonight, after being booed at the Australian Open, the Prime Minister said it was just a case of tennis elbow. (laughs) And a vacuum cleaner retailer, Godfrey's, goes out of business. Now how are we expected to clean up all these bowling balls around the house? And inflation has hit a two-year low, which has many Australians asking, is now the right time to buy our third investment property? Celebrating one million downloads live in Melbourne at the Bolt House Theatre in front of what officials have just told me is just under one million people. This is Irrational Fear! <laughs> Woo! This is Irrational Fear. Welcome to Irrational Fear, the show that rips in the news with the best and brightest. And just like former Senator Erica Betts, we have turned one million. Yes, let's meet our fear mongers for tonight. So inspired by Irrational Fear's success, our first fear monger started their own satirical comedy video podcast on the ABC. From the weekly, it's Charlie Pickering. Hello, there you. Yes. Charlie, um, you are now like one of the trusted names in news. Is that weird? I don't think that's true, but sure. <laughs> it, it is. It's weird if anyone does trust a comedian. That's, that's dangerous. <laughs> Our next fear monger has swapped the world of stand-up for the world of academia. In fact, they're starting to be a doctor of satirical comedy. This is absolutely true. It's Sammy Shah. Yeah. Sammy, I, uh, I know you're not a doctor yet. but I'm, I'm forcing everyone to call me that, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's your prognosis for irrational fear? Uh, I'm worried about the cholesterol. I, I feel like it's a little high. But other than that, a million downloads. That is, in American, down, American podcast numbers, barely average. But in Australian podcasting, you're the king. You are the king of podcasting. <laughs> That's not true. And you know her as a superstar of stand-up comedy. But after living for six years in Taiwan, she's also our foreign policy expert. Please give it up for Kirsty Wiebeck. Kirsty, how do we ease tensions across the Taiwan Strait? Well, uh, 
Huge question, Dan. Um, I, reckon I recently listened to an awesome guided meditation <laughs> um, on letting go, and I thought I'd just slide into China's DMs and just suggest that. <laughs> And they have held every job in the cultural industrial complex from being a rock star performer to a best selling author to the host of a podcast that does six million downloads a month. A month! It's Richard Feidler! Thank you. Richard, as the host of, um, you know, the podcast with more downloads than any other podcast in Australia, I've just got one question for you. Yep. Who are you wearing? Who am I wearing tonight? I'm very glad you asked me that question, Dan. Uh, as an ABC presenter and dedicated Commonwealth public servant, uh, you may have noticed I'm wearing an ensemble tonight that was handwoven in the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea by a registered peasant. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Is Jared Henderson in the audience? Can you please write that? That'll be great. Uh, and holding the whole show together with audio gusto on the decks, he's quick with a whip, ready to cut sick. It's the number one cultural icon in Melbourne music, DJ Andrew McClelland. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Andy, as someone from Sydney, how would you best describe your place of, in culture in this city? Uh, uh, well, being from a, a city of lockout lords, as you yourself are, I know it's rare to see a DJ who doesn't work at Crown Casino, <laughs> but um, I'm just a melody miner down there, digging away at the musical mines, searching for nuggets for the people. Uh, so, you know, uh, it, does that make me more c culturally significant than other Melbournians? Yes. <laughs> you know, can I just say, sorry, Andy is part of the cultural fabric of this city. And Absolutely. I that, this man DJ'd my first wedding. <laughs> now, the, the marriage doesn't live on, but the memories really do. <laughs> and you, you asked me to DJ the second, I couldn't, and you're still with them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to think you're a curse. I'm getting married in <laughs> August, and Andy, could you please not DJ our wedding? <laughs> Unhappily. <laughs> Coming up on Irrational Fear, we're going to be talking about brain chips and Barnaby Joyce in two unrelated stories. But also, two-thirds of tonight's panel will discuss how ABC employees can't have opinions anymore. But first, here is a message from this week's sponsor. Good evening. I'm Dr Rich Cass, and I'm here to say Labor's meddling with stage three tax cuts has made my whole family of cunts close to destitute. There are cunts like me all over the country who are going to be upset that their $6,000 tax cut is going to be a $3,000 tax cut. I mean, that's hardly a night for the family in Aspen, is it? Couldn't even fly business class. I'd have to go premium economy, <laughs> where they re refuse to call you by your name. Last time we flew economy, well, in 1996, I, I had to introduce myself. Uh, I I'm Mr. Count, uh, and my wife is... Double-barreled. She's a, a right card. Anyway, the point is, Albo, I want my money. When it comes to the piss-down economics, it starts with people like me. Authorised and spoken by Dr. Richcart. Richcart, lives matter, Brighton. Uh, anyway, my uh, cousin, Paul Cart, he's going to be better off. He's a teacher. <laughs> Life's peculiar, isn't it? <laughs> uh, this is a rational fear. So good. You know, uh, Robbie McGregor came around to my house uh, uh, two nights ago before That's I your left. fire, please. <laughs> it's green screen. <laughs> Everything's green screen. But I called him up at 7.30 and I said, hey, uh, you want to come around and record a sketch? He's like, I'll be there in 45 minutes. I've got to have a fucking shave. <laughs> 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 We're neighbours now. He could have made it in 20 minutes, you know, whatever. Um, all right, let's get stuck into some fears. All right, fear number one. Billionaire toddler Elon Musk says that his brain chip company Neuralink has implanted itself inside a human for the first time. In this tweet, he said, Neuralink's first victim is recovering well and initial results are promising, which is a great result for a guy who runs companies where things blow up and are taken over by Nazis. He goes on to say that Neuralink enables control of your phone or computer through almost any device just by thinking about them. Imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than a speed typist or an auctioneer. Yes, imagine. Mm. Mm. Epstein, think... please get me off this island quickly. <laughs> I don't think he wanted to get off the island. He sounded, <laughs> from what we've heard, he was pretty happy there. Yeah. I don't know. I just think, imagine if Stephen Hawking didn't have to be trapped in astrophysics and could have finally lived his dream of being an auctioneer. I mean, that's... 
This is the bold future that Elon Musk promises. <laughs> wormholes, wormholes, wormholes. Give me a wormholes, 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 wormholes. He's sounding more and more like a Bond villain, isn't he? <laughs> it's an airless oh. control of your phone and computer through them almost any device. <laughs> Just by thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's Elon Musk, not Stephen Hawking. Oh, no. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> making sure. Yeah. Here are some things we know about Neuralink. Uh, 21% of the primates in the trial for Neuralink had to be put down prematurely because of complications with the device. Uh, 21% failure rate. That is a small price to pay in my book in order to order, like, you know, paper towels from Amazon at the speed of thought. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> Fear mongers, you wake up with a Neuralink in your head. What's the first thing you're going to do, Kirsty? Get it out. <laughs> I don't know how, <laughs> but I will dig until I find it. <laughs> that, Andy? Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is quiz shows. They're not expecting it yet. <laughs> Make that money. Come on. <laughs> that is so good because at the speed of thought, you'd be able to know everything. Exactly. Mm. At the speed of thought. How fast is the speed of thought, by the way? I don't know. It's a lot slower for me than the rest of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I think it's person contingent, isn't it? It's a, it really is a case-by-case -case basis. I'm happy to say I could think as fast as one of those monkeys that didn't make it through the experiment. I think I could do well, that. Kirsty's totally right, because those monkeys that got put down were actually trying to get the Neuralink out of their heads. Oh, no. <laughs> I've got something in common with the monkeys. <laughs> Didn't it sort of like fall off to one side inside their skulls or something, Dan? It sort of went, uh, uh, detached itself and went clunk at the bottom of the brain pan. Oh, from what I understand is that uh, it didn't work. It's like a monkey was actually like, like slamming. This is going to be graphic. Sorry, everyone. Slamming its head on the floor to try and dislodge it. And Good comedy. Do Good I, comedy. Can I do the demo of what I'd do? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, is how Planet of the Apes. Yeah, right, oh, Rise sorry. of the yeah. Planet of the Apes yeah. meets um, uh, 28 Days Later. Like, this is... I'm excited. I want... Zombie monkey apocalypse. I feel like of all the apocalypses we're currently experiencing, that might be a step up, actually. Yeah. 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 Who do you think's like the first candidate to get a Neuralink, Charlie? Sorry, I went too serious in my head. Obviously, um, <laughs> as for people with a disability, isn't that the goal? That's true, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think uh, Elon no. Musk needs it. That's the thing, I don't think he needs it. The idea that he would have a device that would somehow speed up transmission from his brain to Twitter with less thought, I don't think that's what he needs. <laughs> He's already got that with Twitter. That's exactly yeah. right. Um, it's funny you say that. Like my, my father is quadriplegic and uh, as a kid I had a natural advantage over Dad because uh, he's, not, he's a partial quad, so when I would upset Dad, he would take his time to come and chastise me and chase me down the corridor very slowly. So uh, it was actually great as a little kid because I could run away. <laughs> so I don't know whether I want my dad to have Neuralink. <laughs> well, he could probably, like, change the passwords to Netflix on you. Yeah. Oh, just like that. At the that. speed of thought. Yeah, Damn that's it. right. Yeah, and all of a sudden, he doesn't have to disappear. I do like the fact that the Melbourne audience is right now trying to decide their morality and quadriplegic humour. <laughs> like, it's just, when you said he's partially quad, I was like, I didn't know there was slang for that. That's yeah. yeah, okay, he's my dad, you know. Whatever. Fair enough, Whatever. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, fear number two. In a completely unrelated story, renowned brainiac Barnaby Joyce had this to say about Tony Abbott's intelligence on the ABC <laughs> Nemesis documentary this week. Let's take a look. Tony is a person who's incredibly intelligent at times. They are. My own personal view is that people have three quadrants of their brain. They have academic intelligence, social intelligence and sporting intelligence. Uh, academic, <laughs> social, sporting. The well-known three quadrants. Is that um? Is that uh, partially quad? <laughs> <laughs> so what quadrant is Barnaby Joyce missing, folks? Uh, I, I think he's missing the bit that uh, he was referring to Tony Abbott, and I think the missing quadrant is what Tony Abbott would call the suppository of all <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> Whatever quadrant it is that stops you from having an affair with your uh, web designer, I think, is the one that he's missing. I, at the risk of being obvious, I think he's missing the quadrant that allows you to count up to four. <laughs> it's like, I, I love the idea that there is this mystery that explorers and, uh, would go in search of, of the mysterious fourth quadrant. <laughs> Does it exist? No one knows. We know there's, it's, there's academic, social and sport. No one understands the fourth quadrant. 
Coming soon to Netflix, the fourth quadrant. <laughs> also, I, I, I will disagree with Barnaby Joyce on one other thing. I think he, Tony Abbott only had two of those quadrants. <laughs> Academic and sporting, I can maybe see. Social was not a quadrant. Are you, suggesting, Tony Abbott was social. Firing Are you suggesting that a man that eats a raw onion and then talks to people doesn't have a social quadrant? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have the gastronomy quadrant either. <laughs> I just, I, like, let's be fair, though. Like, let's just be fair on Barnaby Joyce here. Must yeah, yeah. we? To him, Tony Abbott is a very intelligent person. Yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> the Oracle. I think just, like, he hasn't misspoken at all. And then he just backed it up with evidence of the disparity. Yeah. Right, right. I think the fourth quadrant is that button you press on those toys and they laugh like, ah, 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 <laughs> the way Tony Abbott does, which brings any mirthful occasion to a dead halt. Ah, 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 ah. Does anyone ah. remember, like, in the, in the, I think, 2021 election campaign in the lead-up, just before he lost uh, uh, Warringah, he was outside a one of those neighbourhood libraries. Oh, yeah. And on his social media, he thought it was a good idea to point to him and go, uh, isn't this remarkable? Uh, a neighbourhood library. You can go and give a book or take a book. Uh, only in Warringah do you see this generosity. <laughs> I must say, if the mystery quadrant is next to the sporting quadrant, it's almost certainly through the wall of the brain hearing this constantly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so glad I had that track ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, move on to fear number three. We're going to play Hang On A Sec. Ow. Oh, okay. Look, Am I let, the only one? Let, hang on a sec. Let's, let's do it again, uh, everyone. I want you to say Hang On A Sec like as if you're on Price Is Right. Could you do that for me? Okay, ready? Okay. Uh, okay, everyone, now it's time to play Hang, hang On A Sec. sec. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. That was great. That was, that was worth doing, that joke. Absolutely. All right. Okay, so hang on a sec. I'm going to play you all a clip. Uh, and then when you want to chime in with a comment, just say, hang on a sec. And I'll pause the tape. This one could take us a while. Tonight's clip comes from the extremely masculine streets of Stanmore in Sydney, where a protest outside an all-boys school took place. What were they protesting? Well, the school council has decided that in a couple of years... Girls will be admitted to Year 7, making the school fully co-ed by 2032. Here's the clip. If you want to chime in with a comment, just say, hang on a sec. Here we go. Old boy the school. And my son is also an old boy. And the intention was always that I'd have a grandson. Uh, hang on a sec. <laughs> if he's crying that much that his grandson can't go into an all boys school... Imagine how fucking upset he'd be if he had a granddaughter instead. <laughs> Unbelievable. I like that he's got the intention of having a grandson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I'm going to have a grandson, and if it's a girl, I'm going to name him grandson. <laughs> and he's going to go here too, and he'll wear slacks, and he'll be a boy. Can you imagine how upset he would be if this grandson existed? <laughs> <laughs> he's just, it, the concept is already breaking him. <laughs> It does feel like he doesn't want the grandson to exist unless the grandson can go to this school <laughs> without women there. So he's watching his own son all the time going, no sex for you until the school starts being sexist again. Uh, unless that school's misogynistic, you <laughs> leave it alone. Are you going to have kids what? And bring a child into this co-ed world? <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go but I won't bring him to a co-ed school. <laughs> oh! That was, that was oh, pretty close. Charlie, yeah. prescient. <laughs> prescient. Incredible hey. study of human nature right there. Yeah. Oh. Do you oh. know... Um, do you know what? I'm going to make a prediction Oh, here, here. we go. Prescient picker. I'm going to make a prediction that at this protest you're not going to see a single current male student of that school. <laughs> because they just heard a whisper that girls might be coming <laughs> and they are fucking into it. They're very excited right now. They're, they're going to find out what one looks like, how to talk to them. I hear they smell great. It's all part of this sort of woke, toxic masculinity type. <laughs> Hang on <Hello>. a sec. <laughs> Listen. Woke, toxic masculinity. I love that as a concept. Like, show us your tits. <laughs> no worries if not. Consent matters. <laughs> <laughs> I... 
I've often felt women were woke as a concept. Yeah, <laughs> so clear, clearly. Well, they've been woke for ages. Yeah. <laughs> maybe not as many like female students, but maybe more math teachers to help with co-ed <laughs> is equal to less diversity. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Or is it, it like I, I, is it co minus ed? Oh, equals mm, fair enough. less yeah. to oh. the power of diversity. Charlie, I don't know. Oh, oh, absolutely go. brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, galaxy brain there. <laughs> Gal- it looks, yeah. it looks a like hyphen a... can be two things. <laughs> Amazing. It looks like a bit of Barnaby Joyce maths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Joycean, I think it's called Joyce. Yeah, Joyce. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. quadrant are the girls in? <laughs> That mysterious fourth quadrant we could never understand. We, we found them. I'm sorry, but I'm not a uh, a co-ed person. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Hang, hang, on, hang on a sec, indeed. Hang on a sec. This is just such a classic Melbourne lefty pile on of some very nice people here. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. It's a Twitter, I mean, X pile on here. I honestly, I, I, my personally speaking, I almost fought and died in Gallipoli so that <laughs> men could have the right to send their sons and sons and live in a world without women whatsoever where they would reproduce without having to talk to a woman through artificial insemination, create some children. They would do the same thing. They wouldn't have to talk to a woman. They could go to a school without girls or women. This is the Australian way, people, and you are spitting on it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm back. Yeah, that that is it. That's unfortunately, you know, you're on the free feed. If you want to listen to the full thing, head on over to Patreon, a rationalfear.com forward slash Patreon. Chip in three dollars a month, and you can hear the full thing. Or uh, if we haven't already sort, sorted out, head over to Apple subscriptions and uh, and pay to subscribe there. And you can hear the full thing there. But um, probably not. Probably Patreon is the be- is the best place to get it at the moment. Patreon.com forward slash a rational fear here the full show it is absolutely wonderful Kirsty Webex bit on sharks is just a masterpiece anyway we'll be returning to uh, hopefully regular podcasts uh, next week so yeah catch you then bye a rational fear is brought to you by its patreon supporters for as little as the price of a cup of coffee you can get this podcast ad free exclusive content discounts on live tickets and access to the discord chat server chip in at patreon.com slash a rational fear or else